Okay, hello everybody. Today we have a scientific, scientific video. Okay, so we are going to be looking at some vampire media because I really like vampires. Fun fact everyone will know about me if you knew me in real life. I don't shut up. Um, Y'all like the recycled notebook back there? Um, it got rained on. And it was really moldy because it got rained on. That has to do, okay? It's gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be looking, okay, at these, okay? We're gonna be looking at Twilight, the Vampire Diaries, Vampire Night, you see my fear, Buffy, and by extension, but also I'm putting it separate, Angel, Interview with a Vampire, and Wild Card, Diabolic Lovers, okay? And we're ranking them on these three perimeters, okay, parameters, not perimeters, okay? So basically, the base. Wait, I actually don't even know the formula. <laughs> Shouldn't have started that sentence. Okay, so it's gonna be the lore. Like, how does the vampires work in this world? Is it stupid or not? Is really the only. You can either get. There's not too much fluctuation that you can have on this one. Um, and then the second ranking. The second parameter. Oh my gosh, why do I keep forgetting the word parameter? Okay. Is. Is it good? Now this is, I'm trying to look at it more objectively. Obviously it's impossible to look at stuff objectively as a singular person, but I'm gonna try, okay? More so than perimeter number three, do I like it? This one, there might be something that's awful, but I don't care, okay? Exhibit A, I'm just kidding, not exhibit A, because exhibit A would be Twilight, okay. Let's let's look at what Twilight gets. All right, let's let's take notes. So Twilight, it has such a reputation, doesn't it? And my main feeling is that it does not deserve this reputation. It's not. It's just so whatever. It's like the characters are really boring. It's about like the most boring people possible. And. It's just, I feel like there's not enough there even for it to be entertainingly bad. Like, it's not good, <laughs> but it's not bad enough for me that I can look at it as entertainingly bad. I think it's only, I think its main value is held in people who really liked Twilight as like 12 year olds and then come back to it later and see how dumb it is. I think that that's the main way that you can enjoy Twilight, so if you kind of missed it... Like, for some reason, I really liked all the rest of these. Uh, I guess it's for Interview with a Vampire. Um, but I really liked all the rest of these as, uh, so like, a 12-year-old, but I never cared about Twilight, so... I can't... I'm incapable of enjoying it in the main way I think it can be enjoyed, so... Um, for Is It Good? I'm... Well, I skipped the first one. Let's... let's... yeah. <laughs> first parameter, the lore like how vampires work is so bad in Twilight, that's gonna get a 25% because they tried. They tried to make it like unique, right? They tried to be like, okay, they're, they got like Venom, except for here's my question about Venom. Is this addressed in the book? Because I only watched the movie. Maybe it's even addressed in the movie and I just wasn't paying attention because I was so bored. <laughs> The main thing I remember about Twilight is when Bella is pregnant and she has to drink blood and they give it to her in like a styrofoam cup and she drinks it out of a straw. It was so disgusting. <laughs> it's like, why is it in a styrofoam cup? I'm so mad. Um, but they try to do like Venom, right? So, so in the first one, that other vampire bites Bella and injects his Venom. So then Edward's like, oh no, we gotta suck the Venom out so you don't turn into a vampire. So he just sucks the venom out, and then like, she's fine. But then I'm like, wait, but if you're a vampire and you bite somebody, don't you just continue sucking out of that wound? So aren't you already just sucking your own venom back out? I don't know, maybe they talk about this in, I don't know, because I always was like, what? <laughs> Wouldn't he have already done that if he continued, okay. Okay, so <laughs> the second parameter. Okay, is it good? I want to say no. It has almost no redeeming qualities. So I'm going to give it a 25% again. 
That even that seems a little bit high, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to it. Okay, three. Do I like it? I'm gonna give that a ten percent. I could. I can stand it. It's not like I hate it. So maybe ten percent is a little low, but no, I think it deserves a very low score overall. So that's my that's my score. So that gives it a total. Well, then it would be a percent, and that wouldn't make any sense. So it's gonna get a total of sixty points, not percentage. That's what it's called, percentage. <laughs> Okay, so next we're gonna talk about Vampire Diaries. Okay, Vampire Diaries. B. Wait, I just realized I put it as VPD Vampire. <laughs> I guess it would just be VD Vampire Diaries. What? <laughs> I feel like there was an acronym. Oh, it was TVD. VPD Vampire. Okay. Whatever. That feels. Oh, I think that's what J Jenny Nicholson called it. I think that's why I thought of that. Okay. But I was into Vampire Diaries, okay, as a 12-year-old. Um, because my friend was, like, so into it. Okay. Um, and I actually never finished the show. So. I clearly wasn't that into it. I got to, like, season four. Um, and I, But I have also seen the finale because I was at that friend's house when the finale came on. And so, obviously, we had to watch it, but I didn't know what was happening. But I know how it ends, but I don't know how we got there, really. Um, so, I think that Vampire Diaries is really good, honestly, because even if you don't like it, because even if, like, what's happening is really stupid, Vampire Diaries is so good at keeping it moving. Like, the pacing is so on point that it doesn't even matter. If it's stupid or not. Because there's a lot of times where you're like, girl, what? But it's basically, it's structured like, there's a problem that goes on for like three episodes. And at three episodes, it is solved. Okay? But throughout those three episodes, there's a new problem, like, bubbling up. So when this problem is solved, we move. Okay? The next problem comes to the surface. They have to solve that. So it's like, very quickly, you get your questions answered but are also drawn back in because now you want to know what the next thing is so clearly i didn't want to know that enough because i stopped at season four <laughs> um so because of how good that pacing is that brings up vampire diaries so high and also the acting is really good honestly like why is it better than twilight that's what i'm saying it's a tv show it shouldn't be as good but it's better by a lot and also, yeah, <laughs> I always just think of that tweet that says, like, just found out my 12-year-old sister leaves her window open every night because she thinks that Damon from Vampire Diaries is going to come in and turn in her, her into a vampire. <laughs> I think of that. Um, because that's something I might have done, not going to lie. Not at 12. That's a little, I think that's, okay, I probably wouldn't have done that. That's kind of like um, kids when they, like, wait to see if Santa's going to show up. <laughs> Um, ooh, and on the topic of Vampire Diaries, I was at CVS the other day, and they had Vampire Diaries lip gloss. It's like Vampire Diaries branded, and it, like, looks like a vial of blood. And, like, the red and the clear are separated, so it, like, moves around in there. Oh my gosh. They also had, um, eyeshadow that was, like, they had the Team Damon and the Team Stefan eyeshadow palette, and I was like, who's getting the Team Stefan one? Not happening. So, anyway... <laughs> Um, and for the Vampire Diaries lore, it was almost, it almost got 100%, okay, but I'm gonna have to give it a 75 because of, basically, to turn into a vampire, you need to drink a vampire's blood and then die, like, separately, which would be fine, but also vampire blood can heal you. So it doesn't make any sense because because either way it does heal you. So when does it decide it's gonna turn you into a vampire? Because like so many times somebody like drinks vampire blood and then like immediately gets like their neck snapped, but then they just get up. So clearly their whole neck bone and everything just healed. So I don't really understand honestly, but. <laughs> Yeah, because what? Um, but I like how they have they have the usual weaknesses. 
And then they also have their other weakness to just like random vervain, like just random plant. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, so first parameter, it gets a 75%. Second parameter, is it good? I'm going to give it another 75% because there's lots of things that are really dumb, but you don't care, as I already said, because they keep you in. So that 25% loss it has is from being kind of stupid <laughs> sometimes. Um, like everything is always like the height of drama. Like everything is always related, which I guess is how you have to do it because it's a TV show. You can't just be bringing up random people. Everyone has to be someone, you know? <laughs> Cause when it was like, I don't know, Elena found out who her real mom was, and it was like, <sighs> the, it was her teacher's ex-girlfriend, oh, wife, ex-wife, who died, but actually she got turned into a vampire, and who turned her into a vampire? Damon, and it was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> it had to be related to so many different characters that we already had. Um, so it's a little stupid, but again they keep you in it so third parameter do i like it 100 percent? oh now i can't give it that high i'm gonna give it 90 percent because again i didn't even watch what there's eight seasons and i didn't watch five six seven or eight and i did, probably didn't finish four so <laughs> so there's 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 vampire diaries final score okay so do the math because i can't <laughs> okay next one Vampire Night. Moment of silence. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not even going to get into it. Because Vampire Night, again, as when I was in middle school again, I was obsessed. It's so bad. It is awful. It is awful. Like, Twilight, you cannot ever hope. To be on the level of so bad that Vampire Night was. So that's what I'm saying. We don't need all this controversy for Twilight. We need it for Vampire Night. Because that was... I feel like I need financial compensation. Mm -mm. So we're, we're just going to gloss over things. <laughs> One. Is the lore well executed? No. Basically, Vampire Night has a system of, of vampirism. <laughs> It's got like a pyramid, okay? So at the top, okay, is the pure-blooded vampires. They are like inbred, <laughs> I guess. That's a major theme of Vampire Night, okay? Um, from like the original vampires, okay? Oh, Vampire Diaries? Well, actually, all of these have original vampires, I think. Okay, um, so they're inbred from <laughs> original vampires. And only pure-blooded vampires can turn humans into vampires. Um, but then there's like other levels. And there was like a lot of levels. And I kind of don't know why there was so many. I feel like there's really just three. Because there's pure-blooded. And then people who are born vampires. But like aren't pure-blooded. And then there's humans that were turned into vampires. So yeah <laughs> and like they have kind of different skill sets um so like they tried but it's like really they'll just be making up rules like you'll be on episode 10 or something and they'll be like oh vampires that used to be human they can't do this thing and you're like why and it's like i don't know because they said so <laughs> so vampire lore it's not as bad as twilight um, but it's pretty bad. So I'm going to give it a 30%. 5% higher than Twilight. Um, two, is it good? No. <laughs> so, see, even, even if we divorce, if you've seen this show or read the book, the book, see, I've, I've watched and read this so many times. So, you know, yeah, but, <laughs> um, even just not even paying attention to what goes down. This show is so boring. <laughs> um, because people are always having conversations. 
that are just nothing. People are always having conversations that are like, it's about to happen. What? She's about to show up. Who? You'll see. <laughs> it's like people have that conversation so many times. That's the only way that the that they can think to like build suspense. It's just having people really vaguely talk about stuff. Um, and then yeah, just in general, just the dialogue is awful because people just talk to each other for way too long. They just kind of say the same idea back at each other like so many times. And I, I watched this show with my brother on one, one of the many occasions that I watched this show. And I remember at like, I think it's in the last episode where like Kaname and, not Kaname, Zero and Yuki are like having a conversation about how Zero wants to kill her. And it went on for so long and it was so, like we burst out laughing like halfway through because we're just like, <laughs> he was just like, I'm gonna kill you. And she's like, why? And he's like, cause I don't like you. She's like, why? And he's like, you better watch out cause I'm gonna get you. And she's like, I'm right here, just get me right now. And he's like, no. And she's like, why? And he's like, I'm not going to, but you better watch out cause I'm gonna kill you. And she's like, when? And he's like, you better watch out cause <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> um, he doesn't, by the way. Um, I also, I hate Zero so bad. He's so bad. And it's like, it's so funny because how did you make Kaname look good? Because how did you make Kaname look good? How are you that bad? Right? Like, it's serious. Because <laughs> he's so mean. And it's like, I don't know, like episode two or something, he's already threatening to kill himself in front of like the main girl. And it's like, why are you viewing him as a potential partner? Like, not that man. <laughs> Cause he's like, I'm a vampire, I'm gonna kill myself right now. And she's like, no. And he's like, oh really, oh really, you don't want me to kill myself? Then you do it. And he like gives her the gun. And it's like, oh my God, like, I wouldn't want any part in that, but okay. And then, and then we didn't even talk about, I mean, we briefly <laughs> went over the inbreeding, okay. Now, as a seasoned Vampire Night reader, mostly reader, I don't think they really, they don't like convey this well enough in the show at all, but indeed Kaname and Yuki are not brother and sister, okay. In the show, they really make it seem like they are. <laughs> I don't know, like, um, I mean, it's like the main problem with Vampire Night. Well, I've said so many things on the main problem. There's a lot of big problems, okay? But is that you can just really tell exactly what's going on in the writer's mind, and you're just going like, "Girl, get help!" <laughs> like, um. This is not normal, but yeah. In the show, uh, other characters are like, OMG, Kaname, is that your sister? And he's like, no. But would it matter if it was? And it's like, <laughs> why did he say that last part? <laughs> um, he, in reality, he is related to her, but I don't, I don't know. Cause it's like, he was one of the first vampires so a lot of people are descended from him but like i don't know he's really like her great 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 grandpa so okay um so these are our choices and i'm just kidding i love kaname that guy is insane i love him he makes this show so entertaining Cause he's just off the rails. Like, where the show ends, you know, the book keeps going. And <laughs> right where they ended the show, this is Kaname's insane person arc. He just goes and he just starts killing everybody. And then himself. And then the book ends with him being brought back to life. And it's like, oh my gosh, why do people keep bringing him back to life? Stop. He died once, got resurrected. Um went crazy and killed a bunch of people and then himself 
and then y'all resurrect him again? Like, he doesn't want to be here. <laughs> and also, y'all resurrected him into a world where he has a daughter that he didn't know about because he killed himself before he, <laughs> before he found out that she was pregnant. Imagine being her. <laughs> um, whoa, possibly your brother kills himself and then you find out that you're having his baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um that's so funny okay and okay so not only does he have a kid that he didn't know about um yuki and zero also have a kid and he just wakes up and he just has to live in a world where where that's happening oh my gosh that's so funny so vampire night is it good it's getting a lower score than twilight it's getting a five because it's so bad on every level. My pen stopped working. It's so bad on every single level. Nothing. There's no redeeming quality. I'm just playing. Because three, do I like it? 95%. We gotta give 5% allowance for me not condoning <laughs> things. But 95% enjoyment otherwise. Because it is so funny. And just like, I just love talking about it. Is it so, it's like the situations are so out of pocket and you're just like, who, why, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. So it has a total score of 30 plus five plus 95, okay? Which means it's too high, is it? <laughs> okay, next we're gonna move on to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so watch out everybody from before because she's coming for you so this is a different style of show i suppose the other ones were more romance oriented this one is definitely still buffy's still very romance oriented but it's not the main focus i'd say maybe it kind of is let's be for real well i don't know whatever <laughs> um so actually, um, I guess the vampire lore thing doesn't apply so much here because it's very classic vampire lore, so for that, it gets a 100% of vampire lore. Great work, Buffy. But yeah, because I have been uh, re-watching this just now, and what I really forgot was how freaking dark this show was, as in like color-wise, as in lighting-wise, not like the tone. It's just like, it's so dark. Like, I can't see anything, ever. <laughs> what? Okay, I get that, like, it was at nighttime, but even when they have shots in the day, it's so dark. Because, I, like, I watched Angel, and then I went back to Buffy when I was rewatching it. When I was rewatching both of them. And, like, Angel is so much brighter. So when I went back to Buffy, I was like, dang, what the heck? I can't even see him. <laughs> what? Um... But I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer because it's just, I feel like the characters, well, that's kind of true. <laughs> I was going to say the characters, but then I was like, Xander and Willow are really kind of like, whatever. They're pretty boring. There's just something there that I just love it. And like, it's such a comforting show to me, even though there's a lot wrong with it I guess it's not like that bad it's like nowhere near <laughs> any of these other ones even Vampire Diaries I'm including you in that any of these other ones okay because you were goofy a lot of times but here's what I think okay I think Buffy kind of falls off at season four and is it coincidental that this is where Angel got his own show don't know <laughs> But I just think that uh, the best synergy of cast was like season two and three. Maybe like halfway through season two <laughs> and three. Cause one is like, it's fine, but it doesn't have, it's like not fully formed yet, you know? Um, and then four is like, they lost Angel and I don't know why that destroyed the whole show cause it shouldn't have. <laughs> But it immediately got so much worse. The villains got was like the villain in season four was so weak. Um, and then I really hated like Buffy's new boyfriend. I don't really remember why. I need I haven't rewatched to season four yet, so 
I feel like he can't be that bad. But I remember hating him. But now I'm thinking it, and I'm like, wait, he's kind of Leon Kennedy. Isn't he? Um, t um, so, and then, yeah, basically, actually, season five to seven, the final one, all of them have a fatal flaw where they just add one wildly annoying character that I hate so much. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hate the whole season. <laughs> um, that's kind of funny, actually. Because, yeah, in season five, they add Dawn. Whoa, can't stand her. Um, can anybody? And in season seven, obviously, they have Kennedy, which is, like, maybe the worst character ever made, ever. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so two on Is It Good, even though I just said a whole bunch of negative things about it. Um, those actually aren't really that negative. It's just um, my feelings in terms of just kind of, like, I'm less happy with it season four onward. Um, but Spike was carrying the hell out of that show on his back. If they didn't have Spike in there, if they didn't have James Marsters, like, girl, the show would not have gotten past season four. Let's be serious. <laughs> uh-uh. He- th this sh this show should have been called Spike. We don't need the rest of you. Okay, um, so is it good? I'm going to give it... 70%. No, I'm gonna give it 75%. Which is the same as the Vampire Diaries. Now on Do I Like It scale, I am again, I am going to give it a 90%. Because again, overall I really really like it. It's just there's certain parts that I wish were better, but it's like, it's fine. It's not like they're bad, they're just less good than it was in season 2 and 3 I think. Even though it's so freaking dark in season 2 and 3, I can't see. Um, but I kind of like the dynamics that they all had in that era. So, here's here's our final score, okay, for Buffy. Which, why is it diagonal? Don't even think about. It. Um, Angel, Angel. So here's where I get to make my confession. I have I didn't make that confession in the Buffy section, but I would go to the ends of the earth for Angel. So, you already know. You already first of all, I mean the. The vampire lore is the same, so it's getting 100% again. The- oh, <laughs> But we get to number two. Is it good? I actually- honestly, I think Angel is better than Buffy. Um, season four is unhinged. <laughs> oh my Season four is tanking the hell out of this score. I'm about to give it on the second parameter. Cause <sighs> it's getting an 80% on is it good? 15% uh, of that drop is from season four because what? And then season five is also kind of unhinged but it's like unhinged and like positive way. Cause you're just kind of like what? But I like it. <laughs> Um, or season four, you're like, stop! <laughs> what the heck? And it's not even like it's bad. It's just like the plot lines are so crazy that you're just perplexed, honestly. But season one is like if Buffy the Vampire Slayer was NCIS. <laughs> and then season two, save for like the first couple episodes, which I hate because they have Darla in it and I can't stand her voice. <laughs> I mean, Darla's, like, mm, pretty prominent in season two, but, like, she's very prominent in the first couple episodes. And I'm like, oh my gosh, shut up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Wait, I feel bad. But, like, oh my gosh, her voice is terrible. <laughs> um, season two, excellent. Like, really good. It drops a lot of the NCIS energy. Or just, like, mm, generic crime show energy. Not necessarily NCIS. Um... But it's still, it's still there. Season three, this is, this was the make or break, okay? This was determining how we proceeded because season three is very good. It has some of my very favorite plots in it. But also, once, once we had the, the baby grow up and come back, it was like, this could get bad. And then season four came and confirm that. <laughs> Although I'll give it that season four is like it's still entertaining. 
It's not like it's not entertaining. It's bad in a way that's like, I gotta see what's going on, because what the heck? I'm just confused. Um, and then randomly, <laughs> the finale of season four is that, so sorry guys, is that Angel's son becomes like a suicide bomber for like no reason? What? <laughs> okay. Um, then season five, it really goes back to the season one NCIS energy. But with, with the unhingedness of what has come before. Factoring in. So on a scale of do I like it on the third parameter, it's getting a 100%. Because, as I've said, I would follow this man Angel to the ends of the earth. I, yeah. So I, I don't even care. He's just, I just, wow. Flawless, great work. Like, and it's funny because I'm watching, I'm rewatching Buffy right now, and he's so lame <laughs> in like season one and two of Buffy. You're just like, how did he get his own show? But also at that point, even he was my favorite character when I watched Buffy for the first time. Because I just liked that he was just there. I just really liked that he was just there. Because it's like, who's this guy? He doesn't go to school with y'all. He just shows up. And he's like, I want to kill vampires, guys. It's like, okay. <laughs> go home. This is weird. <laughs> I also, he's so funny in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because obviously he becomes Buffy's boyfriend. And he's a like 300 years old vampire. And she's like 17 or something. <laughs> And so he's like, hey, this is weird. I'm like 300. So like, what? This is strange. Not gonna happen. And then he's like, just playing. I actually don't care. Because this is gonna happen. And then when he breaks up with her in season 3, he breaks up with her because he's like, this is weird. I'm really old and you're not. And it's like, what? I'm realizing this too late. <laughs> but obviously the real reason he broke up with her is because he was getting his own show. But anyway. <laughs> Um, but Angel, I'm just so happy, honestly, that he ended up single at the end of the show. That was kind of a slay. That was kind of a slay. And I think that's also because they unexpectedly had to write somebody out, but, you know, it's fine. I think it's a positive. Um, I really, I feel like it was so obvious for him to end up with Fred, though. I don't know how he didn't end up with Fred. I'm still mad about that. All these years later. Because, like, they were pairing Fred off with literally anybody else. Isn't that so weird? <laughs> First of all, they only had two female characters and like four male characters and they were like desperate to pair people off. Um, and why did they never consider Fred and Angel? That's the one that makes the most sense, isn't it? Or am I crazy? They put Fred with literally everyone else. They put Fred with Gunn for a long time, which I feel like that would have been my second choice. That's the second best one. Then they put her with Wesley off and on, and you're like, Wesley? I just really hate Wesley, okay. <laughs> and then they put her with Spike, and you're like, actually, this isn't that bad. But then she ends up with Wesley, and then she dies. <laughs> you're just like, what? She should have been with Angel. Why did they never consider that possibility? I'm still mad about that. I mean, I'd like they slightly considered it. But he, she was just like, I kind of have a crush on you, Angel. And he was like, oh, I don't like you. Like that. And she's like, oh, okay. And like, that was it. So I was like, why? I don't know. <sighs> That's what I would have changed, but whatever. <laughs> so here's our, my final score for Angel, okay? 100%, 80%, 100%. Whoa. Our winner. Obviously, there's going to be our winner. It's my favorite one. Duh. Okay. Next one. Interview with the vampire. Now this one's getting a little dicey because there's the show. Well, why would I mention the show first? <laughs> there was the book, the movie, and the show. And they're all like separate. Um, but I'm gonna just kind of talk about it overall because I feel like all these three things share enough similarity like that is not blasphemous to talk about them all together. Um, but it's weird to me, honestly, that this has gotten as many adaptations as it has. And like, that it has endured for so long. 
and that Lestat specifically has become like a pop culture character like he's become like a really famous character like people know who Lestat is like I knew who Lestat was before I read the book or anything it's like why did I know that information <laughs> just like not really that good I mean I really I like it I like it a lot better in show format I think obviously the show is the best adaptation the best version of it um which the show hasn't finished yet so actually maybe that'll change but I don't think it will um I I don't know it's like it's not strong enough of a story that I think it should have really gotten as big as it did but I still like it just not that much <laughs> um but yes I really like vampires so I appreciate this that was an inspiration for so many others right so anyway one is the lore well executed I'm gonna go with kind of no because I think the lore in like how vampires work has one fatal flaw literally fatal flaw I guess which is that they can't drink blood from dead people as in if they're drinking someone's blood and like that person starts to go <laughs> they gotta stop like right now because if like the second that person is like their heart stops and you're still drinking the blood like it's over for you <laughs> except not really because Lestat survived it but anyway um <laughs> which I just think is so weird and like that just bothers me so instead of 100% uh, I'm gonna give it a 75% because that actually bothers me a lot. Um, two, is it good? No, honestly, 50%. It's like not bad, but it's so. First of all, I think the format of telling a story as just an interview is like a really lame way to tell a story. Especially in this case where the interviewer was like not really there in the book. <laughs> like he would ask one one line question and then the vampire would continue to talk for like 10 pages <laughs> uninterrupted. So it wasn't really that much of an interview. Um, and that's just it's just kind of a lame way to tell a story. It's like one of the least engaging ways to tell a story ever. And then also the second book, it was like really bad. So it's kind of not good. Um, but do I like it? I'm also gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a 65% because I do like it, but it's not up there. Like it's not touching Vampire Diaries. Definitely not touching <laughs> Vampire Night on how much I like it. And obviously it's not touching Buffy or Angel because those are like, that's the one, you know? Um, okay. So here's the, here's the score for Interview with a Vampire, okay? 75%, 50%, and 65%. Okay. Um, so now we're gonna move on to our wild card, Diabolic Lovers. So this one is the most obscure. It doesn't fit in with any of, well, I, I guess it's not that obscure, but it doesn't fit in with the rest of these. Um, it is originally, okay, it's a PSP game that's like a dating game, kind of, I guess. <laughs> where you are a human who has been abducted by a mansion wait <laughs> by six vampires who live in a mansion you were not abducted by the mansion okay <laughs> you're abducted by six vampires who live in this big mansion and your role is you're just gonna get eaten by the vampires okay so it's it, it's appealing to I don't know women's inane desire to be eaten by vampires it's in all of us isn't it <laughs> so yeah basically all the vampires are like evil and they like want to eat you except for Subaru slay Subaru my favorite character um and they just stay like that like they aren't changed by love or anything they just stay crazy but you can marry them so cool but you can also die but it's funny because if you die uh, the game just continues <laughs> so it's like did i die i don't know because you'll be in a situation where you're like how did i survive that and then it's like chapter six and you're like 
what? Like one time I literally got put in an Iron Maiden. And then it was like, next chapter. What? I didn't live. <sighs> um, yeah. So is the lore well executed? No. There's like no vampire lore in this one. The vampire lore is to get turned into a vampire, you just have to like be exposed to vampires enough. You just have to be bitten by a vampire enough times. <laughs> like an indeterminate amount. I don't know about that. And then they don't really have weaknesses. Like they can go out in the sun, I think. I mean they can, I think they just don't like it. Um, they aren't weak to like religious anything. Not weak to garlic. I don't think they can kill be killed with a stake to the heart. I mean they can probably die if you like cut off their head, but um, lame. <laughs> And just general, they, they don't have a lot of stuff going on. They can like teleport and like they're stronger when the moon is full and weaker when it's a new moon and it's like, I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna give the lore a 10%. They've made an attempt. <laughs> um, two, is it good? Honestly? It really kind of is. Like, I'm talking about the first game, because after that, I don't know, they add some people that you're like, no, he, he can't be here. But there's actually a lot of thought put into, like, how everyone's personality works and how everything relates to each other and how you need to, like, work around their personalities in order to survive. Um, and I think that that's actually... They did a really good job of that, and also the audio mixing on this is insane. I mean, it's just kind of like they just recorded it with one of those, like, head microphones where they can, like, walk around it. But, like, dang. It feels like you're in it. Like, it feels like they're really there talking to you because it's like they move across the room and you're like, oh my gosh, like, this is really happening right now. So is it good? I'm going to give it a generous 70%. Because there's some issues that we can't ignore, but I'm going to ignore. <laughs> Three. Do I like it? Absolutely. Now this, this right here is the true definition of a comfort for me. Because everything melts away when you're in this. Because how are you not going to pay attention to this? So if you've got some crazy stuff going on in your life, you've got to play this game right now. Or watch the show or something. Like, because how are you going to be distracted with any of your other problems? When you're trying to be thinking about how am I going to survive the vampires who are also, I'm also in a very sexually charged situation with right now. Like, yeah. Do I like it? Yeah. Yeah. In all of my darkest times, I just turned this on. And, oh, let's not use that word. <laughs> um, we're going to give it an 85% because I don't want to give it too high, but that was actually pretty high. <laughs> so here's, here's, here's Diabolic Lovers. So obviously the highest, the winner was Angel. Um, I think the lowest is Twilight, but I haven't added it. Yeah, yeah, the lowest is Twilight because it's just so boring. Like, I don't even care. So, yeah, that's, that's our finals, finals, final rankings. Watch Angel. Honestly, you don't even have to watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer to watch Angel. Just make assumptions. They're really not connected. There's like an occasional crossover episode and they're not even that crossover-y of crossover episodes. It'll just be like one character shows up and then yeah that's it so it's like cool it's like yay 